you know, what I like to do is I like to just direct them someplace else, um, whether they have a chance of getting that financing or not. Um, I don't like to just hang up on somebody. I like to you can answer it. Is that your phone? You could answer it. <laughs> Go ahead right. and answer it. Tell them you're on a podcast right now. Hey, honey, I'm on a podcast. Can I call you back? <laughs> Bye. She said, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> she, she's actually shocked that I answered. Oh, really? <laughs> what the hell is Tim doing answering the phone? Jeez. There are just too many commercial loan brokers that don't have a damn clue of what they're doing. All we're trying to do here is better the industry for everybody. At the end of the day, you can make great money in this industry, but in the end, it's all about helping people. You know, people always say, Chris, how can I be a successful broker? It's two words, hard work and dedication. If you don't like talking to people, you probably shouldn't be in this business. Hey, everybody, Chris Roglary, President and CEO of Commercial Capital Training Group, and welcome to our podcast, Entrepreneurs in Finance, where we feature the daily lives of our CCTG graduates, what they're doing, um, their pitfalls, their successes. And today we have a very special guest of Tim Maloney of Quickline Capital Partners. Tim, how are you? I'm doing great, Chris. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. Um, Tim, you are probably uh, one of the most animated characters of our, what I call our CCTG family members. Um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, we just got done with your, your friend, Bennett Abel, and I'll tell you, he absolutely crushed it. So not to make you nervous, but um, you, you, you have a lot to live up to after uh, uh, Bennett's performance, which everybody will see sooner than later. Fair enough. Well, you know, there's a very good reason why I picked Bennett to be my mentor um, four years ago. So that's right. Bennett is a mentor of yours, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Okay. All right. Well, um, Tim, let's just get started. Um, tell me about life before CCTG. So what were you doing? Were you happy? Were you unhappy? You know, what, what led you to eventually find, uh, this crazy place we call, you know, uh, CCTG? Yeah. So, for the 20 years uh, preceding CCTG, um, I worked in private equity. I worked at two different companies. And um, look, it was 100% travel. Um, the money was great. You know, the old golden handcuffs. Uh, very difficult to, to think about leaving. In fact, I, I deliberated for probably a year and a half. Um, luckily, I'm in upstate New York and you're pretty close down the road. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I went down there and, and I just decided, hey, look, I'm young enough. I'm going to make the decision. I'm going to pull the trigger. Um, I believe in the stuff, you know, and I looked at some of the testimonials and reached out to a, to a couple of the folks that were on there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm very happy that I did. Um, I won't say that, that before here I was miserable, uh, but certainly work-life balance was completely off. Um, you know, I would do three months in Australia. I'd do three months in Germany, three months in LA. Um, and very tough to have a family when you're traveling like that. Sure, sure. Um, and I forget, when did you actually come through our training? Uh, so it was a little over five years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, did you actually come to our office prior to investing with us, or did you just? I did. No, no, no. So I, and I forget. It's been a long time. So I, I, that's okay. I did. Um, you know, here's the thing. So I'm walking away from a very uh, decent paying job, um, and you know, my wife sort of wanted proof of concept, and you know, it was like, hey, how do you know you're not going to show up there? And it's going to be 17 phones on the ground, right? So, so you know, the old boiler room uh, thing. So I, so I went up there and, and glad, and glad that I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get that a lot, right? I mean, we get, and think about somebody coming from like California uh, uh, and, and they're just praying that we exist. It's actually an office. And I can't tell you how, uh, you know, I, like when Christina greets people and, and sits them down in a conference room, uh, I, I can't tell you people are, you know, they're, they're texting their loved ones saying yeah, later to come to find out they got a conference room, they have an office, you know, like they're so relieved. So not everybody's as fortunate as you to only be, you know, two, two hours away, two and a half hours away. Um, okay. So you found us, you went through training, which I, I think, you know, to say the least it's, it's intensive, right? Um, Tell me about your experience with the training itself. So if you could take your mind back to when you were sitting in our conference room learning, what were you thinking? Were you scared? Were you, were you like, holy shit, what did I get myself into? 
Not at all. I was anxious. Who the, hell is, who the hell is this guy, Chris? I mean, you know, what, what did you? What yeah, not, none, none of those emotions. So what it was, every single lender that presented, I wanted to do their deals now. Um, and I fell in love with every lender that came up and in, in each one as they came up and I was learning a little bit more and more, I liked their product even better, mm -hmm. it was, which is kind of crazy when you think that you meet, I mean, at that time, it was like, what, 30 guys, right? Yeah. Or 30 yeah. people come through. So um, I left uh, training with, you know, my foot uh, binder of paperwork and, and all the lenders' uh, materials and, and just an entire notebook full of notes and sat down and, and really started chasing after all of those types of deals. Okay. And, you know, talk to me about your first six months, maybe even a year in business. <clears throat> I always say, look, you got to be prepared for, you know, you may not close a deal for a few months. Um, you, you really got to work hard at it. it. What was your experience? Um, not every graduate closes a deal the month after. We, we've had it done. Uh, we've actually had graduates close deals in class, which is another story, but it doesn't yeah. happen that much. But tell me about your first experience when you left training. What did you run into? Yeah. So my, my very first experience, I, I mean, I did a couple of small, tiny little uh, loans, mm -hmm. um, nothing to pay the bills, right? Um, but it was better than zero. Right. Uh, but one of the one of the leads that uh, Finance Marketing Group sent me was for an SBA deal. Um, it was a disabled American veteran bought a, a business down in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and and I closed that. And I can remember specifically um, at the time. Um, my wife and I were in California when I saw that it closed and, you know, the lender told me that they'd be sending over my wire. And I said, listen, let's go buy a house in Huntington Beach. I mean, this is the easiest job in the world. We're going to make, we're going to make a billion dollars. Things, this is just incredible. Yeah. Um, and then, and then what happened is, you know, the next six months is where, where really I started uh, suffering from my pitfalls and my pitfalls were trying to be that guy that knew all 29 different loan programs, right? Tried to be that guy who was trying to be on a first name basis with 40 or 50 different lenders. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it wasn't until I met Bennett um, at a conference, at that first conference, which you um, encouraged me to go to because I was pretty despondent, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm like, listen, Chris, I love you, buddy. Good luck with everything, but I think I'm going back to my old life. Mm -hmm. And your words were, hey, listen, I understand that. I think that you should really give it a shot reach out, connect with brokers who are doing it. You'll see what they're doing. And, and I did. And then when I left, Bennett said, hey, hey, stop, stop trying to be an expert in, in 50 th different things. Get on a first name basis with two, three lenders. I'll focus on their products and, and, and watch their deals come in. And that's yeah. Exactly I mean, and, and, you know, you're, you know, so it's funny. So let's, let's just backtrack. What did you feel when you closed that first deal? What were the emotions when you finally closed your first one? Was it just like, Wow. You know. It was incredible. I mean, it was 32,000 bucks, right? So um, I've made decent money my whole life, but I didn't get a check for 32,000 very often. Right. Um, and, and it was, it was like, how do I, how do I now grow on this? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, 32,000 is great, but what about 20, $32,000 checks? Mm -hmm. How do I, how do I build that up? Do I pick up some 1099 brokers? Um, do I hire a staff? Uh, it was just, it was proof of concept for me, for my family. Um, and it was the jumping point where everything is possible. It was, it was, you can imagine anybody that gets a check like that can imagine. Sure. Well, it's so much so that you wanted to convince your wife to buy a house in California. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay. So that, you know, you're, you're excited, you're pumped, you closed your first deal. That's certainly a hell of a commission for a first deal. And now that next six months starts, right? Mm -hmm. And you're kind of trying to do everything. And, you know, listen, you, you went through class, obviously. I always kind of profess in class, listen, you can't, you got to pick a couple of products to focus on. You can't do everything. Even if you have two or three partners, you can't do everything. It's important to know everything, right. but you know, the, the point is just to focus. So what was the turning point? All right. So you're out doing a bunch of things. I know you, you, I talked to you, I told you, listen, come to our conference. You're going to meet a lot of other brokers. You'll get some insight. So now you did that. You met our, our boy Bennett. Yeah. Uh, um, and what was the next 12 months after that? Like it was a whirlwind. So, um, very first thing I did when I came back is just put my entire focus into this commercial real estate. Right. Um, sure. I still knew about the other stuff and I was still getting leads for the other stuff, but that was my focus. And because that was my focus, I closed a couple. And when I closed a couple, um, 
because of the way I do things, more came back to me, right? When I close a deal today, I send out five handwritten letters mm -hmm. to, the, to the listing agent, the, the, the selling agent, the closing attorney, title company. Anybody involved in a transaction gets a letter from me. Mm -hmm. A borrower gets a gift. It's like, hey, just did a great job for your guy, Chris. Uh, we funded him in three weeks. We communicated well throughout the entire transaction. I'm going to call you next week. I'd love to know other clients that you might have that I can do the same level of service for. And what happens is it just breeds more of those deals. Um, both, both the same type of deals come, but the same geography, right? So um, as we had spoken last winter before COVID, you know, I have a pocket of, of really strong clients in Cincinnati, have another one in Memphis, Tennessee, and have yet another one in Virginia Beach, Virginia. So much so that I wanted to open up offices there um, and then COVID comes along. But um, so, so those deals started building on top of each other because mm -hmm. they come back. I think you like to call it, you know, pay your bills or paying the bills products. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they come back. Um, you know, so the, I don't want to get into nuance, but there's some loans that are actually two loans in one now, right. That I'm doing. And, and it's, right. it's just incredible how it compounds on itself without additional marketing, but we were still doing additional marketing on top of that. You know, so yeah, well, I mean, one takeaway is that, you know, you're in Syracuse, New York, right? Good market. Uh, it's nope, for the most nope. part, for the <laughs> most part, for some things, uh, <laughs> but and this is what I'm getting to, you know, you obviously wanted to expand in, in, in different markets. So it's a common question that I think graduates have is, look, I'm in a market that's, that's small. Uh, when I say good market, the only market there is basketball. That's it. You got, that's all you guys are known for. Yeah. Syracuse. Right. Basketball. What the hell else is in Syracuse? Well, I mean, I'm not going to, I mean, you guys, there, huh? <laughs> we have a lot of stuff, just not a lot of high property values. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, listen, I've been in New York state all my life and I don't know anything in Syracuse except for basketball, but in any event, that's a different conversation. But so we have graduates that come in and say, I'm a small, I'm in a small market. Can I actually, you know, make a living and not realizing that your whole market's the whole country. The and, what, and, and what you said is evidence of that. I mean, what, what's the, What's the breakdown of deals, right? How many are in Syracuse and how many are outside of your market currently? Yeah, so it, it, probably 40% are here in Syracuse or what we'll call central New York within 60, 90 miles of me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably about 40% of what I do. I would like it to be about 10% of what I do because I can chase deals in anywhere in the country. So if I'm doing a deal in Virginia Beach, Virginia, where the average home price is 450,000, why wouldn't I want more Virginia Beach, Virginia deals than Syracuse where our average home price is about 110. Makes sense. I mean, in the end, it's more money, right? Right. I mean, but, because, but because of our reputation, and, and we do, Chris, we, we go above and beyond for people. Uh, communication is key. You know, we've got our app. People know where they're at throughout the entire loan process. What we hear time and time again is, you know, their last uh, experience with a different lender was, you know, they didn't hear anything for weeks and weeks and weeks. Then finally closing comes and the terms changed and all of these horrible things that, that we just don't take part in. And um, it's just easy. So when we close those Syracuse deals, more people hear about it. Look, if you were a realtor in Syracuse, New York, mm -hmm. and you heard your friend say that they got their commission check in two weeks and that they knew every step of the way where the loan was and how it was progressing, um, wouldn't you then send your clients to me? Sure. Um, so that, that's why we get a disproportionate amount here in Syracuse. I don't spend a nickel marketing here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. And let's talk about marketing a little bit, right? Um, how do you get most of your deals? I mean, there's several strategies to do marketing as we teach in class. Yeah. Um, I believe you have to do multiple strategies at once. One single strategy is, is not always a good thing. I'm, I'm a big proponent of diversity. Uh, you can tell with the family of companies we have here. So I practice what I teach or what I preach with your business. How, how are you getting business in the door? How have you got business? In the same, same as you. So um, we don't, I, I try anything. I, I joke around that I have a $2,500 threshold for pain. I will try any marketing idea. Um, that's 2,500 bucks or less just to see how it works. Right. Um, you know, it, I don't just do pay-per-click. I don't just do other internet advertising. Um, I also, I like to host, well, I mean, it's, it's COVID now, but I like to host cocktail parties. I like to, to go and present at real estate offices. I will tell you, um, on March, I'll make it up, I'll say it's March 10th. On March 10th, I flew to Cincinnati, Ohio 
where I've got some deals. Mm -hmm. Spoke with uh, uh, the folks at Keller Williams there. Um, in fact, the gentleman owns three Keller Williams offices in Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, met with a bunch of realtors, a bunch of investors. And in the week following that one hour presentation that I flew out there to give, I had seven deals ready to roll. Um, so, and it would have been more had it not been for COVID. So right. I will tell you that of all the marketing things, um, sure, pay-per-click's easy, um, internet marketing's easy, but that face-to-face, -face, if you can ever get in front of a crowd of people, specifically in my, my target would be real estate investors, take it. Go right. give them a presentation on something um, and you'll, you'll, the deals will come in. Because that face-to-face, -face, you know, you can have the slickest portal in the world. It doesn't right. replace the face-to-face. -face. Oh, no, it always is, right? I mean, you know, I always say there's, there's direct marketing, indirect marketing. Indirect marketing is, is what we're talking about, networking. So how, I'll get to the whole COVID question of what you're doing now, but how has COVID affected that? Are you doing like, are you drinking a beer at a Zoom party in front of bankers? Like, like what's, you know, how are you networking now? Yeah, so I'll be honest with you. Um, just today, for the first time since, you know, basically COVID started dying down, mm -hmm. um, today is the first time that anybody here told me, hey, we need some more leads, we need some more stuff. It's been so busy um, mm -hmm. with all that pent up demand um, right. that it was basically, we weren't even able to address all of the people that were sending us deals. Um, so today was literally, and it was about an hour ago, um, one of the account execs worked up the nerve, came down here and said, hey, let's get some more leads. Well, I know a great marketing firm to help you do that. Yeah. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm hitting my, my list and I'm going to send them out. Um, <laughs> hey, here's the last four deals we closed. Here's what we're doing today because I know what the rest of the world is doing. Right. Um, they can't compete with us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, and I know I, I realize for some of the new listeners that are thinking about getting into this business, you're at a different point now in your business than you were when in that first 12 months. But, um, y you know, marketing yourself obviously is, is so important. Um, always looking at opportunities, right? Um, what, what are some things that you can share about getting business in the door? Um, you know, that, that, that you're doing now. I mean, like a, you went through training. We talk about how to grow the business, how to bring on independent contractors, how to you know expand your business with a sales force. Uh, I know I've spoken to you personally many times. I know you've done that. Um, I guess what I'm asking is, aside from what you already said, when did you start to realize? Let me bring on some people, right? If you could remember back to what we taught in training, yeah. What point in your business did you say I, I want to expand? And the way I'm gonna one of the ways I'm gonna do that is bringing on additional reps. Absolutely. So early on, very early on, um, I grabbed a couple of 1099s, right? And mm -hmm. these were just people, eat what you kill. If they sent me a deal and we funded it, I gave them some, maybe some of them got 50%, whatever. Um, and that's sort of always been a revolving door, right? Mm -hmm. um, at any given time, we'll have nine or 10 folks like that. Um, we'll probably have another 15 or so referral partners. Um, the difference there is referral partners, you don't always pay. Uh, maybe you send them gifts. Uh, but 1099s are, are brokers who they're expecting that check. Um, I will say it's probably about a year and four months in um, where I said, you know what, I can do more deals. I shouldn't be capped out at 10 a month. Uh, mm -hmm. I should, I should uh, not be spending so much time on the paperwork side of things. Now, I could, I could probably choke you because you didn't offer anything to help with that when I went through five years ago. Uh, so I had to go and hire somebody. Uh, <laughs> But that was my first W-2 hire, right? Was uh, somebody who could do the loan packaging for me. Yeah, we do. That's right. We do. You're speaking of our program we have now where we have a loan package yeah. service through our legacy package. Um, so how many deals are you doing now on average? Yeah. So, you know, we used to look at, you know, about 100 applications a month. Um, we're seeing now that those applications are, you know, into the two, 300. Um, and, and, you know, we're, look, we're very aggressive. Uh, we're not only are we aggressive, we're very asset focused. Um, so, you know, we're, we're trying to fund every single one of them. I got to tell you, I mean, you, I think you've outdone Bennett Abel because I think he said he does about 18 to 20 a month. So, which so, I'm sure you'll enjoy that. I mean, I know you got, you have a, no, no, no. I, I owe everything to Bennett. I, I really do. No. So I, I also have a lot more uh, overhead than Bennett does. Bennett, Bennett has a very good life. Every time I call him, He's on a beach someplace, so. I know, you know. He a, might be the smart one. 
a recent conversation, we just had a conversation and he, he said that uh, he has a collection of wetsuits and he actually sells used wetsuits to people. And I, I said to him, who the hell is buying a used wetsuit? It's, it's almost like buying a used mattress, right? I mean, he goes, no, people buy it. And I go, wow, that's, that's interesting. But yeah, he's always hanging out somewhere on a beach. I know. It's- or he's out there with his uh, son out in Arizona at college. So yeah, he's got the life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, and, th- and that comes with the territory. It's always a balance, right, Chris? Right. I can go and hire five people tomorrow, um, but what do I do in two months if those deals haven't come there? So my choice has always been to grow organically which was got the deals, everybody's overworked, let's hire on and let's get some relief. Not the Terry Luker, hey, I know this business is coming, let me go hire 10 people, and then the business comes, right? Yeah. I mean, I've always admired him for having, uh, you know, the, the, the vision to see that that would happen. Yeah, he's a risk taker, for sure. He's, sure. he's one of our superstars, uh, as well as you guys. Um, so I see your, is that your home or is that an actual office? So you, you're in a, no, I'm actually in, in our office. So we're in New York. So now we're like, I guess it's like stage three or stage four, phase three. We were allowed to come to work. Allowed to come to work. So what do you have behind you there? I see a jersey. Uh, so that, that there's a pinstripe jersey because if you're in New York and you uh, coach a, and sponsor a little league team, you get to give them pinstripes. It was awesome. Uh, it's a button down, just like the Yankees. And these kids wow. were really eager. So uh, I also, I'll turn this thing a little well, you know, bit. You know, that's awesome because um, I know you're a married, married person, but if you were single, right, you could actually brag if you, if you meet somebody and say, hey, I actually sponsor a sports team. I mean, you've, you've been so successful, you, you sponsored a sports team. So that's cool. Yeah, it is. It's phenomenal. And actually, we, have, we also do a, a basketball team, too. That's that red one. Oh, of course, awesome. the name yeah. of all of these teams is Quickline Capital, by the way. I see you got a lot of fancy stuff on the wall there. You showed us your, your Jersey, your, you're a sports club, you sponsor sports teams. Now you're, 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 you're flying high. Um, can you take us a walk through your office? Um, absolutely. So, okay. You know, some of the things, like I said, you know, this is, uh, we love to decorate our office with the recent deals that we've done, right? Uh-huh. And these are just circulated around as we close more deals. Um, you've already seen uh, the jersey here for my team. This is a Marine thing. That's right, and you're a Marine. Yeah, I so was a Marine. Next Marine. Marine. Um, um, so here's an office where we put brokers in when they come in um, to visit us. Um, and we have usually have a couple here. Um, here's some of the other ones. It's, five, it's a little after five here, so the dedicated ones are still here. Um, now, if they're leaving at five, they're no good, Tim. They're no good. I'm telling you right now, if they're, they're, they're clock punchers. So, so what you see back here is just that this is our wall of deals for this week. Uh, most of them here came from Daquan. Um, Daquan is still in the office. I know. Hey, now, Daquan, he, say hello. Hey, hey Daquan. See, he's a keeper. See, he's not leaving at 5 o'clock. That's right. So you want, you know yeah. He never turns on his light. He's like a vampire. I think he's sleeping. <laughs> he's, got the, he's got the three laptops open. Another Marine, right? He's another Marine. That's exactly okay. right. All those decorations. Again, with the same theme, though, we like to show all the deals that we funded. I see that Rye closed his door. He's our um, loan compliance officer. He's well, the can't, one can't you open it up? I'm going to open Your it. office. I know. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So what Rye does is he packages all these loans for us, right? Okay. And and he's working on some stuff. And and, and I think offline, I'll I'll tell you. But he's somebody with some serious uh, financial challenges uh, that we've gotten approved, and that's what he's looking to close today. That's awesome. Uh, and, and here here's just some close. Um, you know, mm-hmm. what we we're what we we're going to do is to try to keep up a map of all the deals in the United States. Impossible at this point, Chris. Um, we're we're going to do it electronically um, and just put a flat screen up so that we can, um, you know, so that we can all admire just all the crazy places that we've been able to fund, even if we haven't gotten there. Uh, you know, let's see, where else are you going now? You going no, back? I'm going back to my office. That's awesome. These guys were doing some mean mugging, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're all, they're all I, I got to pick a bone with you. Yeah. How come you don't have the CCTG certificate on your wall? Ah, there it is. Okay. All right. 
hey, I have you in a place of honor with my wife of 30 years, you know, my children. So, yes, you're, uh, you're – hey, wait, look at this one. Let's see. Let's see if he knows this or That is the NACLB award you won. Wow. So it's in a place of honor with – but, yeah. That is awesome. Well, I appreciate you giving us a little look in your, in your daily digs there. Do you find that, uh, this made me think of a question, a lot of graduates say, you know, do you ever really meet the borrower? Do you meet your borrowers or is it all, you know, obviously if it's a different state, it'd be tough to do that, but how often so, do you meet your borrowers? So as often as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. So that Cincinnati meeting came out from me offering to go with one of my borrowers. Um, she is going to light the real estate world on fire. She's done six or seven deals already. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I asked her, I said, hey, introduce me to this group. Introduce me. Let me come and speak at this group. And, and she did. Um, but as often as humanly possible. And, you know, the thing of it is, we're only talking about a little bit of gas money, Chris. Um, you know, if you're not doing a lot of deals, if somebody's not doing a lot of deals, get your butt in the car and go meet that borrower. Because when you do, say, hey, um, love to, I'm coming down. I'm you know, coming to Virginia or wherever you are, let me take you to lunch. Hey, invite your realtor too. Now, next thing you know, you're giving your, your pr quick presentation over a, over a meal. Right. Okay. It right. always, always, 100% of the time, always pays off. And yeah, so it's a good point. I mean, obviously, if you're in a different state, uh, I, I know like from our own business here, what we do, uh, whether we're financing a deal or brokering a deal out, but, you know, we, re we don't meet borrowers too often. From our perspective, well, I, we're all over I the think, country. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not. I don't meet them too often. I'm just saying, as often as humanly possible, I try to. Sure. I, I, if you're asking for a percentage, aside from the people in Syracuse, I probably meet maybe ten or fifteen percent of my borrowers. Okay. All right. Yeah. That, 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 that's a good number. Um, you know, speaking of of products, I think you've mentioned a lot of times the word fix and flip. Fix and flip. Yeah. Is that the product that you concentrate on? So it is. Um, you know, and, and that now has sort of morphed into when they're done with the flip, we have an entire system here where we can, we've, you know, we, let's just say we know because we see your draws, say, give you a call, say, hey, Chris, looks like you're about 70, 80% done with your flip. Um, mm -hmm. I just shot you over loan terms of what this would look like as a rental. Um, you bought it for 100, you put 50 into it. It's now worth 200. Well, guess what? I can give you a loan at 80% of the new value. Um, so we're going to give you 160,000. You're going to get your entire down payment back. You pay back the flip loan and you still got 20% equity and you've got a property for the rest of your life. And oh, by the way, that $30,000 that, that the difference that you get to keep as cash, that's not profit. You don't get taxed as profit. That's debt. Um, I'm not giving them, uh, you know, accounting advice, but it's just such an easy sale. I've taken people who have said, oh, I never want to own a rental. That's not for me. I just like the flipping business. So these people are not building portfolios. Right, right. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, you concentrate on fix and flips. Um, tell me about, you know, what's, what sucks about this business? Well, uh, I mean, there's, there's are some downsides. I mean, I, I swear to God, I'm, on my three kids, I love coming to work every single day. Uh, but there are times, and this is why I like to do 30 deals a month. What sucks about this business is when you're at the finish line and they, you get left at the altar and they go with another lender. That's a um, great, you know, uh, actually Bennett said the same thing. We could talk about what's great about this business all day long, but what sucks? I mean, that, that, that question is not asked a lot. Yeah, it sucks because, um, and I don't know Bennett's style, but I'm pretty sure he's the same as me. I never charge anything up front. I'm in New York State, as you know, very difficult to get upfront fees, um, nor would I if, if oh, it was okay. Yeah, we Do teach you, don't, don't collect upfront fees. We teach that. I understand. Right. And that's part of my thing. It's like, oh, look, we're a trustworthy company. If we don't fund, we don't make a penny, uh, we don't want you paying us. Uh, but right. one, one of the drawbacks to that is that you get left at the altar and it sucks. It sucks for a number of reasons. One, you were counting on that money. Uh, two, that, you know, you've been played, you know, you feel betrayed. Uh, but more importantly, and probably the one that hurts me the most, is I now have to call my lender and tell them we got played. And, <laughs> and, and, and the lenders, look, they're big boys and girls too. They get it. But at the same time, they're kind of like, geez, man, did, 
didn't you didn't you ask him if they were like you know working with somebody else you know so yeah yeah that's yeah. Uh, yeah that's that's definitely uh the worst part about it what's the largest commission you made on a deal um uh, 32,000 not well twice i did it twice i did that sba deal um and then i did one actually a guy it's a quarter mile down the road from me i did a refi on his warehouse um i hit singles so do i chase those 60 80 hundred thousand dollar deals absolutely um but i like singles i would rather have 30 three thousand dollar deals mm -hmm. um that have three seventy five thousand dollar deals and have two of them leave me at the altar then where am i at What's the craziest deal scenario you've come across? The most wackiest thing? I could tell you mine. I mean, yeah, my, so. I, my, I, I had a, uh, about 15 years ago, I, I, I got on a call with a son uh, of uh, I think about an 18 year old kid called me and said that his grandmother makes the best pasta sauce that he wanted to borrow $100,000 to commercialize the pasta sauce. That's, that's one that always sticks out in my mind. Oh, that's great. Um, I, I don't even think the grandmother even knew he was trying to do that. You know? So what about for you? What's the craziest request you've come across? I don't mean legitimate. It could be, as you know, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of crazy stuff out there. But yeah. No, the one that sticks in my head, um, and look, this, I say this all the time. You might have heard me say it before. In an eight-hour day, you can make 32 15-minute phone calls. So regardless of how ridiculous somebody's request is, I'll always give them a courteous 15 minutes to be professional. Um, you live and die by your feedback, right? right. Um, this, this young man calls me and tells me he's been being picked on in school and he's getting picked on and he wants a million and a half dollar loan so that he can get all these things, you know, a Lamborghini Gallardo or whatever the hell you pronounce it. And, all those things that, and, and I'm like, oh, buddy, that's just not how this works. You know, I'd love to do it. And I'm trying to give him like fatherly advice uh, and I'm laughing about it and I shouldn't because I felt really bad for this kid. But right. yeah, um, that's, I mean, that's just the, the weirdest one. Um, there's just so many, Chris, yeah. uh, you know, all the no money down deals that people call you with, right. they always, they, and then they argue with you about, you know, why you should be loaning them money. So that's always. Well, everybody thinks they have the most special, unique deal in the world and it's the course. best thing ever. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's a. That's right, Tim, I'm, I'm, I'm buying this property. It's worth a million dollars. I only have to pay 88000 for it. Why can't you give me $900,000, uh, you know, for this property? Right. It's like, well, guess what? We live in a, in a perfect free market society. If that property were worth nine hundred, you'd be paying nine hundred. So they don't like that. You know what I love? I love when you get the calls of, um, you know, hey, I, I, I want to do this $25 million development deal. And, you know, you see, you start asking them questions and, you know, well, have you done this before? Well, no, I haven't done this before, but I know a lot of good people and, you know, I, I have a great vision. And then you ask, you know, then if even if you get to the point where you pull credit, they have a 500 FICO score and they have maybe $50 in their checking account to their name. Yeah. I mean, those, and sometimes it takes longer to uncover that, right? right. It's, it's, uh, those are always interesting. Yeah, those are always interesting. Um, you know, you, you, and the thing is you bring it up and, and we get them often enough that you can kind of sniff those out early, give the guy his, you know, five, 10 minutes of courtesy. Right. Um, you know, what I like to do is I like to just direct them someplace else, um, whether they have a chance of getting that financing or not. Um, I don't like to just hang up on somebody. I like to you can answer it. Is that your phone? You can answer it. <laughs> Go ahead right. and answer it. Tell them you're on a podcast right now. Hey, honey, I'm on a podcast. Can I call you back? <laughs> She said, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> she, she's actually shocked I answered. Oh, really? <laughs> what the hell is Tim doing answering the phone? Jeez. Yeah, she usually uh, calls the office and talks to Brooke. So. Um, awesome. Well, yeah, so let's uh, – what's your favorite food? My favorite food uh, by far is Italian. Um, you know, we're in Syracuse, so the north side of Syracuse has some pretty amazing restaurants, even though you say the only thing here is the uh, basketball team. Right, right. We have, a, we have a little Italy. You think a guy named Robolari would respect that, but um, <laughs> it, it, it's pretty phenomenal. It's a, it's a, we spent a lot of money down there. Um, little Italy is, is really nice. Now we have the Armory Center. Uh, so uh, there's a place, Francesca's. Um, if you over tip like I do, then you always get a great seat. You always get phenomenal service. And it can't be beat. Best place in Syracuse. 
what's if you could meet anybody in the world and have an hour with them dead or alive who would it be all right so i'll put away the easy one and say my father um, who's passed away okay. um, i will say that you introduced me to one of the two people that i would have picked um i was fortunate enough to have been at the last conference and as a veteran um, I got a, a private one-on-one -on -one with uh, Robert O'Neill. Um, mm, so right, guess phenomenal, me. phenomenal human being. Um, love everything about the guy. Anyway, um, and then after that, would be somebody I don't even know how you respond to him, but Grant Cardone. Um, I, I like a lot of. I know he's he's very polarizing, right? People either love him or hate him. Um, I don't love him. I'm not, you know, uh, uh, in his cult, uh, but I think that he's an exceptional marketer. Absolutely. Yeah, he does a good job. Definitely does a good job. Um, yeah, Robert O'Neill. Uh, that was probably one of our most interesting uh, uh, keynote speakers at our, at our conference that we had. I, I never forget, we had a, so we had a video person filming the conference as we always do. And beforehand, Robert O'Neill said, no cameras, no cameras. I don't want any cameras. I said, okay. And him and I were talking. We got along. And then... Uh, <clears throat> he started his presentation. And of course, what do all good camera people do? They don't listen to you, right? Exactly. They want to put the shot. And we had our video person literally sneak around. He had a, a little handheld camera in his hand and he held it by his waist, kind of where his coat was. And he just kind of went up and down the aisle and he was just walking, right? Meanwhile, Robert O'Neill's in, in depth talking about, you know, Osama bin Laden, killing Osama bin Laden. After, he came, after he was done, we escorted him out of the back. I was escorting him out of the, out of the uh, building. He turns to me and said, hey, that camera guy, he goes, who is he? And I go, I, I just played. I said, I, I, I don't know. He goes, well, he had a camera. And he goes, make sure you, know, you don't publish that footage. Because he, he didn't want people yeah. you know, publish his, his, his presentation, right? But yeah. it amazed me that as he was giving the presentation in front of a 1,000 people, right? Oh, yeah. A thousand brokers that attended our conference, he actually spotted the camera person and that he had a camera and like mentally marked it in his mind, right? I mean, yeah. that, that's some Navy SEAL stuff for sure. That is some Navy SEAL stuff. <laughs> it's funny, when that presentation was getting ready to start, yeah. Um, the president of, or the owner of RCN Capital, he and I had just happened to be talking and I said, Jeff, look, I don't want to be rude. I have a front row spot reserved for me. Um, there's actually an extra chair. You should come and see this. So Jeff and I sat there in the front row. I, I had actually moved people's things so that I could have that spot. Right. Um, and, and we sat there and I'm telling you five or six times I turned around, I looked around and everybody riveted. I've never heard another president, and I've seen them all. I've seen Gary Vee, I've seen, I've seen them all. Mm -hmm. And he had everybody literally speechless, hanging on his every word, phenomenal, anyway. Yeah, no, another, funny story, no, another funny story too, and when we were getting prepped up and, 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 and he was doing some mic checks, I, I went over to him, I said, hey, and we developed a little rapport before this. Sure. I said, hey, uh, are you ready for this? Are you, are you ready? He looks at me, he goes, I was in the Osama bin Laden raid. He just looked at me. He goes, I love yeah. It. He goes yeah, I think I'm ready. <laughs> and I go, yeah. oh yeah, I you know, forgot who I was talking to. Um, you know, you mentor a lot of our brokers, uh, which I appreciate you doing, doing that. Um, what's a common question that some of the newer people are asking you? And, and, and I'm going to piggyback that with, what do you see brokers doing wrong? particularly CCTG brokers, because I can tell you, because I mean, I live and breathe it every day, but from your standpoint, what do you, what do you see them doing wrong? Yeah, and I am so glad you're bringing up this question. So, um, well, the first thing that, that, that what they call in there asking me about is, is usually um, how do I get, how do I close people and how do I get more leads? So, mm -hmm. so those are for pretty easy for me to, to solve. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, my advice, Chris, it's always direct, pragmatic. Um, but if you ask me the same question twice, I start losing, you know, some patience here, right? Because, you know, nobody's sending me checks. I, I'm happy enough to help anybody out. And, and that's me as a human being. Um, but I'm also not going to do their job. Um, so when I see what they're doing wrong, they're not following the advice. I'm giving you, I opened up my playbook. I'm giving it to you. By the way, this playbook was copied from Ben and Abel. Um, this has been perfected. Um, and this is what you can do to get cash in your account 30 days from today. Um, and then when they call me, 
And they said, yeah, geez, I got no leads. The phone isn't ringing. You know, what should I do? And I'm like, okay, well, how did X, Y, and Z that we talked about last time, how's that working out for you? Well, I, I haven't done that yet. And, and, I, and I, I don't know about call, calling uh, realtors. And, and I didn't send that, that blanket email out to my contacts. I'm like, then why are you calling me? You know, I, I can't magically bring deals to you. Yeah. You got to go and, and proactively, you know, hit your contact list. And I'll tell you, Chris, this, I say it, and it's not just to get somebody off the phone and, and hope it works. It works. You know, I told you I have 15 uh, referral partners. If I call any of them right now, they will have a deal for me. It's just human nature. If I were to call you uh, before this podcast and ask you a question, you're going to give me the answer. You want to be helpful as will your referral partners. So, yeah, I mean, oh, and that's, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, you know, it's a two way street, right? We can give you all the tools um, and you got to do some type of marketing. And, and if we're doing it great, you know, you got stuff going on, but you still have to meet people. It's a multi marketing strategy, but if you're not doing anything, if you're not doing what we say, I'm not saying what we say is the Bible, but you know, if you're not out there, doing something each and every day, it's not going to work. I mean, you know, nah. like I said, you yeah. could have, you know, you could have the best steak restaurant in the world, but if, if you're not marketing, no one's going to know you exist. Right. That's exactly right. You're, you're going to die at the vine. So, um, but I do appreciate you taking the time of kind of being a mentor to our folks. I know even some people have even come to your office. Is that correct? Yeah. So, um, you know, actually, one of the guys came to my office, and I hope he doesn't see this, but he comes to my office, and uh, he said, hey, I'll just be a fly on the wall, I'll see what you do. I'm like, absolutely, I'm an open book, come spend the day. By 9.30 in the morning, he had asked me 55 questions, he had brought a notebook of questions, and I told him, I'm like, well, my buddy, you didn't send me a check for $30,000, you're a fly on the wall, flies don't talk. So, and so, he, so he sat there for the rest of the day, and you know, and I said it tongue in cheek, but he really was firing out questions to me. Um, but um, he, he was so uh, impressed with, with everything and, and, and gained so much, he's sending his wife back. He had actually sent me a bottle of Jameson whiskey, smart guy. Okay. And, and I, said, I said, listen, you're brilliant for sending me the bottle of JMO. I said, I don't know about sending the wife down here on the thin end. So. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness. Well, but you know what, though? You have to appreciate that aggressiveness, right? I mean, Absolutely. I think a lot of times what graduates don't understand um, – you know, obviously we give references, people can talk to people. Um, they find our testimonials that you guys do and they, and they call people, but they don't understand that you guys don't get paid for that. You guys, you know, are out running your business and you're gracious enough to talk to our folks, but you know, spending an hour and a half on a call, um, yeah, you're not, you know, that's, that's, it's called ROT return on time, right? You're, you're yeah. really getting nothing out of it. You're doing it because you're, you're doing a, you know, really a, a courtesy for us, which, you know, I always appreciate, but, um, yeah, there's, there's a limit, obviously. Yeah, no, for sure. And look, you know, the, the in-person thing has been a little difficult for COVID, but, you know, it's just a couple of days ago, there's a guy, and you'd have to tell me where it was from, but it was like, a, I think it was a 615 area code, and he calls me, and I invited him up. I'm like, listen, you know, nine months in, he hasn't closed anything, he's struggling, he's bouncing all over the place. He's finally today agreeing to start focusing just on commercial real estate since mm -hmm. he's been bouncing around for nine months. I said, okay, well, you're nine months late. You know, you should have been following my advice early on. But anyway, right. come to Syracuse. He goes, well, that's like a 13-hour drive. I'm like, brother, what do you got to do? Like, honestly, like, I'm inviting you here. Like, out of the goodness of my heart, I, I just don't understand sometimes. Uh, but yet, you know, and I say that, but then there's the other guys who, hey, I'll be there tomorrow, right? So, um, you know, for every, for every guy that you just can't help, um, there's enough people who are super happy. Um, in fact, I'll, I don't want to name her by name. Uh, a, a recent graduate called me, called me, called me, called me. She's lighting the world on fire now. I can't get her to return my call. So, Because <laughs> she's probably busy. She was busy. And I, hey, I couldn't be happier. Right. I'm like, you know, mama bird saw the bird leave the nest. I'm proud. See you later. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Tim, are, are there any final comments you want to make about people viewing this? Uh, about, you know, and I always say maybe someday they'll do a podcast for us you know, when they become yeah. successful. But any, any parting comments? I mean, look, life is short. Um, if you're unhappy with what you're doing now, um, you know, think about the risk versus reward, right? And I did the same thing. I walked away from a, a pretty lucrative position to have the chance to do my own thing. 
and I couldn't be happier. I'll never turn back and I'll, <clears throat> excuse me, never work for somebody again. But, um, you know, ultimately this isn't rocket science. What this is, is sales. If you care and you're concerned and you can clearly articulate that to folks on the phone and on the internet and, and in person, you'll be successful. And at the end of the day, you can make good money doing this. If you work hard, I'm going to stress work hard and dedication. Nothing's easy. Oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, you're helping people. And I imagine that's one of the things you probably love about what you do. Phenomenal. You know, I, I tell you, um, one, of the, one of the deals that I have up here, um, a young African-American girl in Cincinnati, she made $80,000 on her first flip, or actually it says $90,000 on her first flip. Um, here we are today. She's got like five or six deals with us. She's going to take over the world out there in Cincinnati. Um, and, you know, how do you think that feels, having a young person, um, you know, have this opportunity to, to fulfill all of their dreams? Right, right. And, and, I, and you know, and that's, I get a lot of joy from that. I mean, people ask me all the time, what's, what do I get out of doing this? And yes, this is, a, like I say, a for-profit entity. But one of the joys that I get is obviously providing people like you an opportunity. And, you know, you're, you're, you come here for various reasons. It could be money. It could be you want to spend more time with your family. It could be, you know, yeah. you, don't want to, you don't want to work for corporate anymore. But everybody comes here for different reasons. But at, at the end of the day, what gets me going and what, what really keeps me motivated is giving an opportunity to people like you and then you going out and helping people. Because, you know, when I hear at our conference that, you know, you close 30 deals a month, to me, that's 30 people that you're helping every month that, wouldn't have gotten help unless you made the choice to come here. So yeah. that's, that, that's very rewarding for me. I, I, I love it. Um, it's, a, it's a really good feeling. Uh, with that being said, Tim, I want to thank you. I know you're, you're busy. You got a lot going on. Your wife's calling you. you know, you, you're not answering calls from your wife, which is, which is important. You got you to do that. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you giving us a priority. And thank you for being on this podcast. Uh, Absolutely. Anytime, Chris. All right. So that wraps up our, um, our episode here with Tim Maloney of Quickline Capital. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. There are just too many commercial loan brokers that don't have a damn clue of what they're doing. All we're trying to do here is better the industry for everybody. At the end of the day, you can make great money in this industry, but in the end, it's all about helping people. You know, people always say, Chris, how can I be a successful broker? It's two words, hard work and dedication. If you don't like talking to people, you probably shouldn't be in this business.